How old is humanity, really? Working out the age of humanity isn't as easy as checking our birth certificate and counting candles on a cake. First, we must define what humanity even is. Is it the period of organized civilization? Is it the timeline of modern human existence? Or does humanity date back to the very first instance of the Homo genus here on planet Earth? All of these things are measurable, and their values have changed constantly due to new and exciting evidence discovered as recently as last month. So, let's take a look at some of the potential answers to the question, how old is humanity, really? Number 3. 5,300 years. Human history only goes back around 5,300 years because this is when our ancestors first began to use writing systems to document what was going on. The wars we fought, the laws we invented, the new way of spearing a bison so it dies quickly and doesn't cry out with a scream that echoes through your dreams. All of this began being recorded for the first time during the Bronze Age when writing was developed in the modern-day Iraqi region known as Sumir. But there was plenty going on before then, and just how far back advanced human civilization goes is a point of contention among many historians. It was first believed that a single cradle of civilization emerged from our race of hunter-gatherers in the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia in ancient Egypt in around 10,200 BC. From here, Organized societies spread out to Katal Hoyuk in Turkey, Mergar in Pakistan, and Ain Us Sultan in Palestine. And after this, the Sumerians and pre dynastic Egyptians formed, setting the groundwork for our complex modern civilizations today. However, evidence is constantly emerging of older, separate civilizations having developed outside the Fertile Crescent in many places around the world. Chinese agriculture is now thought to have begun about 9,000 years ago. Ceramics dating back to 8,000 BC seem to indicate the existence of an organized society in South America. Gobekli Tepe in Turkey looks like it was occupied by a considerable population as early as 11,500 BC. And the unearthing of ancient Joman pottery in Japan could be considered as evidence that a cultured sophisticated group of people existed as far back as 14,500 BC. But is that it? Or did mankind get itself together even earlier? Number 2. 300,000 Years Earth's last glacial period, also known as the Ice Age, lasted from 110,000 years ago to about 11,700 years ago. During this time, Earth was much colder than it is now, with huge glaciers dominating the landscape across both hemispheres. These frigid conditions trapped humans in their status as hunter-gatherers. As with no one patch of land reliable enough to grow crops on a regular basis, our transient existence prevented us from forming ourselves into agricultural societies. When the last glaciation event began, it was previously thought that Homo sapiens had only existed in Africa for 100,000 years prior, having first emerged there 200,000 years ago. The original timeline has us spreading out of Africa throughout a period dating 125,000 years ago to 18,000 years ago, during which time our current interglacial period began. The warmer climes this period brought enabled further migration as the glaciers retreated, and this led to the formation of the first advanced societies. But in June 2017, our assumptions were shattered by the discovery of the remains of five people in a Moroccan mine. These remains, which date back 300,000 years, closely resemble Homo sapiens to an extraordinary degree. Experts are still divided as to whether these remains are those of modern humans, but even if they're not, they're almost certainly our close relatives. So, if there was a single African cradle, human beings may have left it a lot earlier than we previously thought. 
The new theory is that the entire African continent may have been teeming with humans, rather than us being limited to one single region. And furthermore, the fact that we existed 100,000 years before we originally believed means that anatomically modern humans have experienced one, two, or potentially three additional interglacial events over the past 450,000 years. So, might an advanced civilization have formed during one of these pockets, only to be wiped out by the devastation of a glacial period? We're not quite sure. We don't have any evidence of such an ancient society yet. But as we've seen from the Moroccan discovery, everything can change if you start digging in the right places. Number 1. Two Million Years When did humans first leave Africa to explore the planet? 200,000 years ago? 300,000 years ago? Wrong. Try 2 million years ago. Homo ergaster lived between 1.9 million and 1.4 million years ago, and this extinct ancestor of Homo sapiens led the first effort by a member of the Homo genus to spread its influence across the Earth. The Homo genus has only existed for about 2 to 3 million years, beginning with Homo habilis and moving on to Homo ergaster and Homo erectus. The latter two may or may not be the same species, but either way, it was a group from this time which made the first steps out of Africa, many thousands of millennia before Homo sapiens would attempt to do the same. Homo ergaster remains have been found in southern Eurasia dating back 1.75 million years. Homo erectus has also been discovered to have made its way to Southeast Asia 1.6 million years ago. One alternative theory states that it was actually our ape-like ancestors who made the first move even earlier than this. Australopithecines, or an unknown Homo species, may have attempted global exploration over 2 million years ago. But it was Homo ergaster who achieved the most success due to their advantages over their rivals. Homo ergaster had a more modern body shape, which enabled it to travel huge distances. Ergaster was also smarter than its ancestors, as well as being more technologically advanced and having a better diet than Homo habilis or its ape-like predecessors. Unfortunately, Homo ergaster was something of a traditionalist. It had its certain little ways and it stuck to them, as is evidenced by the fact that after developing a basic form of hand axe, Homo ergaster continued using the same design for over a million years. When Homo sapiens came along, we proved more adaptable, refining our traditions and technologies and enabling faster progress. This led to the extinction of several other human species around 100,000 years ago. The Neanderthals then died out 30,000 years ago. The last vestiges of Homo erectus snuffed it out about the same time and their descendants, Homo florensiensis, were extinct 12,000 years ago. Since then, we've been the last remaining human species here on planet Earth. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And we may owe much of this success to just one woman. Mitochondrial Eve Mitochondrial Eve is the mother of humanity. She is the one single woman from whom all modern humans descend through their moms. Her mitochondrial gene is present in each and every one of us, and as time goes on, we're beginning to find out more and more about one of the most important people in human history. We're going to investigate what we know about dear old mom in our bonus video, Eve, the Mother of Man, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, You'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, 
but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.